Hey everyone, and welcome back to part 3 of the Netcode for Game Objects series. If you're enjoying this series so far, please consider subscribing. I'll be pushing to make more content this year, so it's a great time to subscribe and keep up with my videos. There's also a Patreon, which will get you special access to posts, as well as a channel in my Discord just for patrons. And speaking of Discord, we've been growing in size pretty substantially over the year, and it's nice to see people in the Code Help section helping each other out, and also posting games that they've made for the community to play. There's a link in the description to all of that, and the subscribe button is just that big red button below the video, so go on and give that a click. Okay, so in the last video we looked at the client side and RPC calls, and we went through the process of making an RPC to move our character from one location to another. Let's just hit play again and make sure I've got all that working still. So if I hit play here, we're going to start this one as a server. And I've got another client here. We'll start that one as client. And I can click and move, and that's great. And I can do the same from the server side. In this video, we're going to be expanding the concept of movement and adding in a built-in netcode for game objects class called Network Transform. The Network Transform is a specialized class that is built for synchronizing position, rotation, and scale over the network. It also comes with some pretty nifty features that are plug and play to make your overall experience a lot smoother as well. As always, we're going to cover a bit of theory in the start of this video, and then we're going to show how this works in practice. There's a few key benefits worth noting. Firstly, all synchronization by default is server authoritative. As we covered earlier in the series, this means that the server will be in control of the movement of the object that that component is attached to. In this video, we're actually going to be looking at overriding that to make it client authoritative, and it will just make our code a little bit easier to understand while we work through this, and then in a future video we'll look at making it server authoritative. The second thing worth noting is interpolation. Interpolation is the process of smoothing out the jitter and lag that will inevitably happen over the network. This is visible in the game when you see the character teleporting around if the server that you're playing on has either high ping or you start lagging. The way that interpolation handles this is by creating a buffer on the client side. You can think of it like a queue which stores updates, or what's known as ticks, across the network. Without interpolation, the server on each tick will send an update to the client. That client will then receive and display those changes on the next update. However, when you experience lag, the server may have sent three or four ticks before you receive it on the client side. What happens in that scenario is that generally the most up-to-date tick is shown, which results in the character looking like they've teleported from one location to another. By introducing interpolation, we add that queue that holds these ticks back. This way, even when the client receives three ticks at a time, these are all loaded into the buffer and drip fed to the client on each update frame. This will give the effect of the object slowly moving across the screen, making an extremely effective tool to reducing perceived latency. Okay, so we're here in our game now, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a brand new player. So we'll leave the old one there, and we'll just call this one cubed player. And I'm going to create this one as a prefab. And ultimately, the component that we're going to be looking at today is called a network transform. So you can see here the types of things that it's going to sync. So we've got our position, rotation, and scale. And you can also see this interpolation option. There's also some scale thresholds, but they're pretty good as default, so we're not going to worry about changing those. Now, obviously, this is all server authoritative at the moment, so I wouldn't be able to control this from my client. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is just removing that one there, and we want to create a client network transform. Now we can do this by going over to the netcode for game objects documentation under network transform in components. There's a link to a git URL. That's where you can download the script to be able to do this. The script itself is actually really simple. So, and just because a lot of these documentation change over time, I think it's going to be easier for us to just make it. So we're going to instead inside of our project, go over to our scripts and we're going to create a new C sharp script that I'm just going to call client network transform. And we'll open that one up in Visual Studio. OK, so this is going to be a pretty simple component. We're going to be using unity.netcode.components. And inside of the components, instead of deriving from mono behavior, we're going to grab that network transform. OK, so if we open this one up, you can see we've got all the things that were displayed in our component before. And we also have this Boolean here, this protected virtual bool called onIsServerAuthoritative. All we're going to be doing is overriding that. We're going to jump back into our script. We're not going to need a start or an update method. Instead, all we're going to need is a protected override bool on is server authoritative. And you can see the default prefill is that it returns base. We're going to override base, and we're just going to return false. So ultimately, what we're saying is instead of being server authoritative here, we're going to set this value to false, which would make it client authoritative. We're going to hit save on that one, and we're going to close that one down. In Unity, it would be nice to just have this character maybe reset their transform and set them to, let's say, 1 on the y-axis, just so they're a bit above. Yep, that's fine. And we're going to drag our client network transform onto this. 
Now, as I was saying before, you can see we've got position, scale, and rotation. In my example, I'm not actually going to be doing anything with scale. We'll keep rotation because it is interesting to see, but we'll untick those. And the reason why you would update this on your own game is because you want to be as efficient as you can with the amount of data that you send across the network. Keeping in mind that the more data you send across the network, the more bandwidth that's going to be required for the user to play. If a person's playing on their phone, they're generally going to have a lot less bandwidth. But even still, it's just better overall for performance to reduce latency that people are going to be experiencing. So I'll keep position and rotation because I'm going to be moving everywhere. I could potentially get rid of the Y axis because I won't go up and down, but it could be interesting if my character falls off the edge or so. Speaking of my character trying to fall off the edge, he's going to need a movement script. So we'll create a new one here and I'll just call this player movement. And we're going to do a little bit of project cleanup here. I might just make a new folder and just call this RPC movement. And we'll take our scripts from our other tutorial and just drag that into there just to keep it a bit cleaner. And then we'll make another folder and I might just call this client off movement and we'll take these two and move them into here okay that's just going to keep things a little bit neater for us to work with so then going to my queue player we're going to drag on our player move script and we're going to open that one up as well okay so this is going to be a pretty simple script we're going to say using unity.netcode and we aren't going to derive from mono behavior because remember we're doing this over the network so it will be network behavior and we won't need a start method or anything, it's going to be very simple. We're basically just going to be updating it based on our input. So we'll have a public float that we'll call speed. We'll set that to 10 for now. And then we're just going to check if we're the owner, because obviously we only are want to be doing this if we're the owner. And if we are the owner, then we're going to get a float for x, which will be input .get access horizontal. And another float for our z axis that is going to be the vertical. So get access vertical. And then we're going to say transform.position is equal to transform.position plus a new vector 3 of x. We're not going to go on y and then we'll do z. And then we just need to multiply that by our speed and then time dot delta time. So effectively, we're going to allow our transform to move and remember that this is all going to be client side authoritative because we're not relying on checking whether we're the server to be able to do this we're just checking if we're the owner of the object and when the client spawns in as the player they will always be the owner of that object so we'll hit save now jump back into our game we're just going to have to override our values in here so just hit apply so that saves it to the prefab and just remember now that we can delete this fella out the scene but just remember that we have a player that we're choosing to spawn. So in our prefabs, we're now going to be spawning our cube player. Now we're going to do two tests. The first test will just be showing without interpolation. You'll see the character should look quite jumpy. And then we'll do another test showing with interpolation on, and you'll see how much it looks like it reduces the effect of lag. And you're never going to be able to completely stop lag. Um, unfortunately, it's just a distance thing in a lot of cases. Some people just have different bandwidths. So so ultimately, instead, what you're trying to do is make sure that the character has a smooth experience, even if they are running a little bit behind on ping or so. So we've got this set off right now. I'm just going to build this, and then we'll build another version. So I'm going to call this one here. We might just make a new folder, and we'll call this 0 0.03, and I'll just call this no interpolation. And we'll select that folder. OK, so with that one built, I'm going to open up a copy of it. And we'll start an instance in here. We'll make this one here the server, and I'll make the other one the client. And now you can see I can just move around. And what you'll notice here, I hopefully this comes through quite well, is this is quite a smooth experience for the client. But right now you can see on the server, you're getting this constant jumping. And this constant jumping is only going to get worse the more there's lag. Keeping in mind that obviously right now, I'm, I don't actually have an online connection, so I don't really have much lag. There is the potential. Um, to test down the track, which we might play around with in some future videos for our network manager, you can emulate lag. And I could add into here, this debug simulator, a packet lag, a packet jitter, and as well as a packet drop, which is a great way to show what the actual impact of someone lagging would be or simulate what someone lagging would be like. For now, all that we're interested in is that lack of interpolation that you see there where the cube just jumps from location to location to location. And we don't want to have that. We want to have the smooth movement between the two. So we're going to close that down. We're going to try the same thing now, except this time I'm going to have interpolation set on and we'll build a new version. We'll create a new folder and we'll call that 0.04 interpolation. 
I'm very surprised I haven't misspelled that yet. And we'll build that. Okay, so with that built, let's run this again. Running our game again. We'll have our server again, and we'll have our client. And what we should see now is a much smoother movement between the two. You will see that the one lags behind the other, but that's because of the client buffer. So basically it, it lets it run just a little bit ahead so that it can create this smooth movement between the two. And it doesn't really matter which direction I'm moving in, you'll see that that remains the same. This doesn't actually rotate right now, but what we could do as a little cheap trick to get that to work is we can go down here and we can add a rigid body. So we'll add our rigid body. And then you'll see when you hover over your client network transform, it says this game object contains a rigid body, but no network rigid body. Add this component to improve rigid body synchronization. So that's just a network rigid body. And we'll add that. There's no actual components or changing this that you have to add. It's just a script that gets attached. You don't need it, but obviously it will help. Um, so let's go and build this one again. And we'll just call this one 0 0.05. Enter collation with rigid body and build again. Now what we'll do this time de to demonstrate is we might open a couple client instances and we'll have them colliding and you'll sort of see that even when you have a few running at once and we'll start that one up. We'll make this one the host, why not? Because then we get a character. For, for, for starters he falls to the ground now which is nice because gravity comes default with a rigid body. And for this one here we'll start it as a client and for the other one we'll do the same start as a client. And obviously it's a rigid body, so they spawn and they can't spawn on top of each other. And you can see now on all three clients, not only is it smooth, but also if these start to rotate, they rotate on the network as well. And that's because the client network transform obviously handles that rotation for you as well. You can see if I fall off the edge, it falls down nicely and I can move on something else. It moves all the same, same, fall off the edge, let it rotate off and it nice and smoothly rotates off the edge. And the one that's left is this and off it goes. Okay, so that covers interpolation over the network as well as synchronizing a character. Honestly, there's quite a lot we can look at in terms of netcode for game objects. So if there's any that you're desperate to learn about or you'd like to know about, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I've got a list of things that I'm slowly working through and we'll keep adding to this library of netcode for game objects. And, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll be able to make your very own netcode game. As always, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. In the Diamond tier, we have Kendro. And in the Emerald tier, we have Pat. The ongoing support that you two provide is definitely appreciated. If you'd like to sign up, I'm patreon.com slash and I will see you guys in the next video.